What is going on, everyone? My name is Colin, also known as the Decade Investor, and welcome back to the Decade Investor Podcast. In this episode, I'm going to start it by telling you a story, a story of Cornelius Vanderbilt. You might have heard of him before, or maybe his last name at least. He is the man who provided Vanderbilt University with its initial $1 million endowment. So historically, he's a very prominent man. And at one point, he was very, very wealthy. At least his fortune was. When he died in 1877, his fortune was valued at $95 million. That's in 1877. So in today's dollars, that's roughly $2.1 billion. He left smaller amounts of money to his other children, but one particular son who received the majority of his income actually did good. He doubled it over the next 10 years, which then created the largest fortune in the world at the time. So Cornelius Vanderbilt started this. He made his money through railroads and steamboats. When he died, his fortune was valued at $95 million. Most of the money was left to one son who doubled it within the next 10 years. But here's the deal. Within a few short years after that, the grandchildren had spent almost all of the money. Within 30 years after the death of the Commodore, that was the nickname of Cornelius Vanderbilt, in 1877, listen to this. No member of his family was among the richest people in the United States. And then in 1973, when 120 of his descendants gathered at Vanderbilt University for a reunion, there was not a millionaire among them. At one point, this man built a fortune worth $95 million in 1877 or $2.1 billion in today's money. $2.1 billion. And in 1973, about 100 years later, 120 descendants gathered at the university that he gave the initial $1 million endowment to. There was not a millionaire among them. Let me just give you an example. Using a 4% withdrawal rate, which is what a lot of people say is sufficient to retire off of or live off of your investments, a 4% withdrawal rate, $95 million could have produced $3.8 million a year in interest income without ever touching the principal. Obviously, it's not as straightforward as that, but that's just to show you that $95 million is a good chunk of change, that once you get wealthy, there's a way to preserve it. But in this scenario, with the Vanderbilt family and the Vanderbilt fortune, $1.95 $1.95 million in 1877. In 1973, about 100 years later, none of the descendants that gathered at a reunion were a millionaire. Isn't that wild? And the reason I want to talk about this, and I'll explain here in a second after I tell one more part of this story, is right now we are going to go through the largest, what they say is the largest wealth transfer in the history of the world. Roughly $80 trillion dollars will be passed from baby boomers to millennials and Gen Z. So where did this go wrong with the Vanderbilt family? It was a failure of teaching financial literacy. It was a failure of teaching future generations how to understand money, what it takes to get to a $95 million fortune in 1877. So because they don't understand, they just spend without worry. A prime example, one of the wives of the grandchildren went on after they got married to spend a ton of money only because she wanted to be quote unquote elite in New York. She spent $3 million on a house, which in today's dollars would be roughly $70 million on a house. She threw a party to try to get all the elites to like her and she could be included into it. The party itself cost $250,000, which is $5.8 million in today's money. And yeah, it worked. She got the approval of the elite socials, but in today's dollars, She spent $75 million to get accepted into the cool crowd. That's a prime example of you make a lot of money. Cornelius Vanderbilt amassed a great fortune, $95 million. One of his children learned, doubled the money, at one point was the wealthiest family in the world at the time, but then the next generation lost it all. I know what you're thinking. Oh, well, you know, that's not going to be my family. That's not going to be my family. There are some figures from Go Banking Rates. They show that 70%, 70% of wealthy families lose their wealth by the next generation. 70%. 
and 90% of wealthy families lose it in the generation after that. So statistically speaking, within two generations, the wealth that you might amass or the wealth that your parents amassed or your grandparents, within two generations, statistically speaking, 90% of the wealth will be lost. So what can we do about this? We hear this about the Vanderbilt family. Studies show that it happens more often than we want it to. What can we do? We have to become financially literate. It is up to us. It is up to me. It is up to you. If you're listening to this podcast, you're on the right path. But you have to become financially literate. Number one. Number two, to do that, you have to educate yourself on how money works. You have to educate yourself on how investing works. You have to educate yourself on how transferring wealth to future generations works. Three, you have to build a financial plan. You have to know that these are my goals with my money. This year, in five years, in 10 years, and 30 years. This is my plan. Now let me follow the plan. And number four is you have to know what to do when and if you receive an inheritance. Maybe you won't receive any money from your parents. Maybe you will. Studies show it's a roughly $80 trillion that's going to be passed down from the baby boomers to millennials and Gen Z. So you might be getting something. What do you do when you get it? Where do you put that money? How do you preserve that money so that your children can use it? Then their children can use it. And then their children can use it. You have to educate yourself first and then pass that education on to your children, to your siblings, right? Because if you know, that's great. You understand, hey, I want to preserve the wealth that I'm building, the wealth that my parents built, my grandparents, whatever it is, I want to preserve it. But now when I go away, when my time is up on earth, my children are going to get it or my sibling, however you have it set up. But when they get that money, what are they going to do? Studies show that majority of the time, they're going to lose that money they inherit. I mean, it happened to one of the wealthiest families in the entire world at one time. $2.1 billion in today's money, not a millionaire among them, just about 100 years later. So with this $80 trillion wealth transfer that's going to happen, you have to educate yourself. You have to be financially literate because right now most of the world is financially illiterate you have to understand what did i do to get to this point financially what did my parents do to get to that point financially understand it it does not come easy something i think that happened to the vanderbilt family is they didn't put in the work the grandfather the the man of it all cornelius vanderbilt put in the work put in the time right he understood the work it took to get to $95 million in 1877. That's what it was when he passed. He understood the hard work it took to get there. So he wanted to do what he could to preserve it. But then someone else gets it, his children, most of them probably spend it, the one doubles it. But then those children, the grandchildren of Cornelius Vanderbilt, spend most of that money because they don't understand what it took to get to where they are. So whether you're gonna be a part of that wealth transfer or not, you have to understand that I, I as in you, I need to be financially literate, literate, because if I can do that, I can work to preserve the wealth that I've built or my parents built, my grandparents built. And then I want to pass what I've learned and what I understand my financial literacy down to my next generation so that they can preserve the wealth. And we will not end up like the Vanderbilts. You can end up like the Vanderbilts or you can set yourself up for financial success for many generations to come, but it starts with you. So the story of the Vanderbilts is insane to me, right? $95 million in 1877 money, gone. Not a millionaire among them in 1973. It's sad. It sucks. I don't want that for you. I don't want that for me. So you be the change in your family. You be the person that says, we're not going to be like the Vanderbilts. Maybe it's not $95 million. Maybe it's 900 grand. Maybe it's 9 million. Maybe it's only 90,000. Doesn't matter. You can end up like the Vanderbilts or you can set yourself up for financial success. The Commodore Cornelius Vanderbilt once said, any fool can make a fortune, but it takes a man of brains to hold on to it after it's made. Anyone can make money, but it takes a man of brains to hold on to it after it's made. I challenge you to be that person. Be that person of brains to hold on to that money, preserve the wealth after it's already been made. 
My name is Colin, also known as The Decade Investor. I hope you enjoyed this podcast episode. If you did, be sure to rate it five stars, share it with a friend. Thank you all for listening, and I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye.